Welcome to Midlife Matters, where we celebrate women's wisdom and wit. I'm George Ann Lucier, your host, and I'm delighted to introduce today's guest, Krista Sterling. Krista is the Director of Continuing Education at Central Connecticut State University. She has an MBA and a very strong background in sales and marketing, and she's an adjunct professor. So welcome, Krista. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> And we're both Central grads. I know. I okay. Know. And I'm very excited to have this opportunity to help share what Central offers Great. to yes. people yeah. in the way of continuing education. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure continuing ed plays a huge role in many people's transitions when they're changing careers or building something new. I think continuing education has taken on a new role, especially okay. um, in the 21st century, because I've been there about a year. And it used to be where people went, maybe when you and I were there, they went to register for part-time classes, summer classes, and now it's strictly non-credit professional development. So it's really focused on helping people get better jobs, keep their job, and build skills. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a revenue-generating position. That's why I was hired. I have a sales background, but it's really focused on working with the workforce, which is, I think is new to education. You know, it was different when you and I were there. Any success stories come to mind? I think it's almost surprising. Even my bosses said, wow, I didn't expect it to be this busy because Mm -hmm. as the people I work with the most are the faculty. So as I talk with them and they're experts in their field and say, hey, you know, what's out there? What do people need? They talk to me about programs that they're offering. And so we've been putting a lot of programs on the books. And as we get them out there, people are signing up and A good example is there's a medical interpretation class, and we've done it three times now. Um, It's evolving into um, court interpretation and Mm -hmm. community interpretation. And when you look at the world and how the nation is changing, you know, um, cultures are changing. It's going to be a different nation in 25, 50 years. So a lot of people are kind of rushing to learn foreign languages because a lot of our population doesn't speak English. They have to learn about different cultures. And... I see a lot of women, if you speak a second language, it's it's a great ticket to a new career, especially if you're looking for a career. So I've seen um, a few women that have gone through this 40-hour class, and it prepares them to take a national test, and then they can work in clinics, hospitals, any kind of health care facility, and we know it's like a big thing right now. What's involved with 40 hours? I'm just trying to understand what that means, interpretation. I mean, you obviously don't learn a new language in 40 no. hours. And it's, it was hard for me to kind of okay. wrap my hands around, too. Um, the professor is actually a Spanish teacher, okay. and she's certified as an interpreter, so she's certified in the healthcare field. And she actually prepares um, paperwork in the class with drawings of the human body, so she'll teach people. They have to speak the second language, mm-hmm. but then she trains them in how to interpret what a doctor is saying. Okay. Um, and realistically, there's been a lot of cases in the country where people have been sued because they might grab, you know, say the facilities worker, the maintenance worker to say, mm-hmm. oh, I don't speak Spanish. Can you interpret what this patient is saying? And they get it wrong. Okay. So it's just, I think the industry is kind of blossoming because of the changing workforce. Well, that's, and a, that's yeah, very intriguing example. Yes, I know. And yeah. culture is going to be huge. Yes. Mm. And I imagine many women... I'm thinking most of our audience, women yeah, at midlife, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, are good <laughs> candidates for continuing education. I think that they don't always think they are because okay. um, as I was thinking about this, I think a lot of women will talk to me either in my class as an adjunct or will come to Central and they're nervous about going to school. And they think of it like when we went, it was competitive to get into class. Mm-hmm. Right? You, you know, you might apply to five or ten colleges and... And now I think the shift is, it's very, we're competing for students. Mm -hmm. So when I don't always think older students realize that they may have a little bit of the upper hand. They can go for four credit classes, but it's it's almost easier to go back now. And there's a lot of platforms that you can do. You can do online classes. Continuing ed classes can be online. I think hybrid is a great option. So you do half of it in the classroom and half of it online. Mm -hmm. That way you get to network with people, but then, you know, you get to do it from your home if you're juggling a lot of priorities. So I think people still think, oh, am I going to be accepted? Am I going to fit in? And it's very different now. And if you look at Central in particular, there's 
this is for credit, but there's 12,000 students that go to Central mm -hmm. and only 2,000 live on campus. Mm -hmm. So um, that's an older group that's going to school and commuting, and they're all working. It's hard to go two feet without running into a CCSU grad. <laughs> <laughs> and do you find women um, are largely successful at juggling all the different demands? I mean, do they tend to complete what they set out for? Do you have any way of I don't know tracking if, that? Um, I tend to think they do, but I may be partial because I'm a woman, and like okay. my my friends tend to be that way. Mm -hmm. You know, they tend to be educated, and I think if you're that way, and if you're, um, especially in my role as an adjunct, I see it more because I see parents going back, women going back. Like I have a class right now, and I have it's a night class, so I tend to get older students, but I think three of them are older than me, mm -hmm. so you know they're all midlife, and one of them just graduated her daughter, so they. They want their kids to see them going back and graduating and getting degrees. And in my role at CCSU, it's not necessarily degrees, but it's still going back and getting a certificate or getting, getting some kind of training that you can take into your job. I mean, I find in my role at CCSU and the people that I work with, and there's a lot of midlife folks that I work with and women in education, that's what we do. So. Mm -hmm. um, the amount of skills that they have is what impresses me. And I think, wow, that's what I need to sell to my audience. I need to say, if you're really good at sales, maybe get a certificate in something technical, learn a technical skill, or just almost like your financial portfolio, really diversify your skills so that if you do get laid off, that's what I always try to promote. If you do find yourself out of a job, mm -hmm. then you have more skills. And a way of distinguishing yourself yes, as yeah, well yeah. right that maybe captures someone's attention yeah right it's a little different I mean I don't know about you but when I look at my resume and I say I look at my MBA and it's 1995 it's suddenly like a long time ago mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and then if I don't have any other education to fill in that gap mm -hmm. you know if I haven't done any continuing education if I haven't done any skill building then yes you're less competitive I think right it would certainly seem that way, and even in terms of our confidence and our competencies, I mentioned um, when we were chatting before we started the show that I picked up this article yeah. by Barbara Strouch, who wrote one of my favorite books, The Secret Life of the Grown-Up yeah. Brain, and I read that. this was published just as her book was coming out. It was like from 2010, and it reflected a lot of research, mm. good news mm -hmm. about the midlife brain. And I was so interested in some of the terminology that was used by some of the um, subject matter experts, like you need to bump into new ideas <laughs> and jiggle the synapses in your brain, um, scramble your cognitive yeah. egg, because the brain is plastic. Yeah. I mean, it's malleable, it can change, Pliable. which is not right. what used to be thought, right? Right. However, we do get these very established ruts or patterns so by learning something new your example if it's a salesperson learning something technical right it's going to even help them be better at sales exactly because it's shaking things up and just kind of replenishing that whole environment in their brain right so truly it's attention getting on the resume it's something else that an employer might be able to make use of right but most importantly it would seem it's an excellent way for them to really in just increase their overall capacity. Right. You're, and I think building confidence is so important because I've done a lot of interviewing in my past job. And when you, and in my role now, it would be unfair to judge because people might see me as someone they can ask questions to. Right. But you can always sense when someone doesn't feel confident. And I think what a lot of people like, and um, I was talking to a faculty member when I was telling him about this show and okay. about what you were doing. And he said, oh, I wish more people would do it because when you reach that point in your life, he teaches knowledge management. You really have a good base to draw on, and you're in such a different place than the younger folks that you mm -hmm. work with. And you bring such a different skill set to the workplace. And I think people lose that confidence because they don't, all don't find themselves in jobs where they can do that. Mm -hmm. They might find themselves out of a job. Right, you know. And, and one term that I've learned is practice wisdom. Actually, I think it's from the the world of social work the idea oh. that through all of your experience mm -hmm. you gain this wisdom in the practice of what it is that you know how to do so it sounds like it would track yeah, with what right. the fellow you were speaking with 
talked about. And other um, good news about the brain, which I'm sure continuing education could really build on, is that we um, get better at seeing the bigger picture, identifying patterns. I guess yeah. we just have more to bring to bear to any one situation, even problem solving, right. um, ide uh, generating different alternatives. Mm -hmm. We think we have more to draw on. More to draw on, absolutely. So it sounds like right. um, very much with the conversation you were having. Right, and I think if you're confident and you know that you can walk into some of these classes mm -hmm. and you're not going to fail. I mean, you, you can drop out. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's not like you're going to drop out of college and you're never going to get a job. You're going to do them and you're going to try again. One of the women in my class, I realized that she had been to Central and um, she had left for a variety of reasons, had gone somewhere else. And I thought, wow, don't I give her credit mm -hmm. for just continuing on and now at a different college and go. She's like, I'm not giving up. It's and wonderful. she's out of a job, but she had an interview. So Very nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah Sending so. her good wishes. Oh, yeah. And then you provided me with a lot of statistical information that it makes it look like, I'm going to try this figure, mm -hmm. Connecticut's going to need 300,000 more people with a variety of degrees variety and of credentials degrees. Yes. than we are projecting we're going to have, Right. which means we need to tap in as a state to the older worker, right? It's not all 18-year-olds. Right, and that's exactly what they're saying, because... Anyone in education in Connecticut knows that enrollment is decreasing as we go on. There's hi less high school folks graduating. Mm -hmm. There's a variety of reasons, but there's just less people going to college and then less people graduating from college. So in 5, 10, 15 years, there's not going to be a workforce to fill all the jobs that require some level of education. So it's going to require us training the older workforce to come back and have some kind of certificate, some kind of level of education. Mm -hmm. They want to go get a bachelor's. I think that's why it's a really good time to be in continuing education and offer what people need. Like another really popular certificate is a GIS certificate. Mm -hmm. um, UConn does it for credit, and they even send people to ours. It's a non-credit certificate um, because the GIS is all built off the satellites and GPS, mm -hmm. and it, it's being used in every industry now for marketing. So um, I'm seeing a lot of people go through the certificate and not get jobs just with the police and towns, but insurance companies in hospitals, you know, um, so it's it's great. And, and you have a project management certificate too, right? Certified associate in project, project management. management. Yeah, I think the one everyone's familiar with is the PMP, which okay. is really popular. It's very high end and it has a reputation as being difficult to earn and okay. difficult to get through because people will say, I don't want to do that, it's really hard. This is sort of PMP light. Okay. So it's less hours, easier to get through. And the people I see going through that are people that are in different industries that want that on their resume, and it's a good step. Nice. So you might learn um, Microsoft Project. So in that, yeah. So I think any of those things, like if you're in an industry or a job where maybe you don't do project management or use computer skills like that, that would be great to get. People tend to do what they know, I think, right? Yes, you know? right. right. Comfort so, zone. The way to jiggle your brain. Jiggle the brain. <laughs> Get those synapses going. And just quickly, you also right. have um, opportunities for children, um, high school students. Um, let's see, build a multi-copter with drone yeah. technology. <laughs> I, know. I don't wow. know that a lot of people are signing up for that. Um, we have a really great faculty member that's worked with NASA and uh, builds drones. So he's doing... Um, a class and building a drone so there's actually um maybe a half dozen people in well, it, high school kids so wonderful the parts are still expensive but it's pretty popular right now wonderful. Um, but yeah we're doing a whole summer of um kids programs there's like mm -hmm. 12 to 15 all technical oriented so a lot of robotics um computer animation 3d printing nice yeah so i have kids programs then we have lifelong enrichment which are programs that people might come to to network, learn a new skill, just sort of have fun in life. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much, so many great topics at Central to talk about. And then the professional development, which is the big focus. Now, taking that first step to return to school can be hard. And um, it sounds like in your role, you're doing everything you can to identify those barriers, which is what a good salesperson does, right? right? Identify yes, potential yeah. obstacles <laughs> objections. and get yeah. objections mm -hmm. and just um, be prepared to help provide people with that little extra nudge, I would think, yeah, of information right. and um, encouragement. So that's right. terrific. Um, like I had a woman come in. Now, she was a little bit younger, 
But some of her obstacles were, you know, she wasn't from this culture, wasn't from this country, mm-hmm. had, um, was Middle Eastern, had been here a couple of years, and was very bright in her own country. And uh, so we really encouraged her to take the medical interpretation class. And money was tough, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, I think it's $800. But um, she was employed before she finished. Nice. So, but her confidence level coming in was so low. She said, I just don't know if I'll get a job. And I felt like looking at her and her skills, I said, I think you will. You speak Arabic. I mean, it's just, uh, mm-hmm. so it's really looking at yourself maybe a little differently, whatever age you are, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's what you have to reach. But you have to find the people. I have to get them in. So Yes. Well, <laughs> hopefully this will help. <laughs> I know. Now, let's talk about your own journey. Let's see. I think you wanted to be a dancer when you were a child. I know. I know. I always say I'm still dancing, just a different kind, right? Um, Yeah, I mean, I grew up um, doing jazz and tap and uh, lived in New York for a little while. And then I think I quickly moved back home. And that's when I went back to school for my MBA. So it's a very fun time of life. I mean, if I could do it over, I'd probably do it the same. Maybe I would have stayed longer, but maybe I could have made a little more money dancing. I don't know. But it's a hard, that would be a hard life. Yes. Yeah. So, and so you, I believe, spent about seventeen years in what I would call seemed like really concentrated sales, sales and, and marketing. marketing. Yeah, and um, when I came back, I did a lot of temp work. Went back to school. I really, really had no idea what I wanted to do. And I think it was in my late twenties when I took a job in marketing. Um, okay. In retrospect, you know, sometimes I wish I had taken a sales job at that point because I worked in marketing for twelve years, and then I think I was forty when I said, "Oh my God!" Like been here 11 or 12 years and I just don't think that's great I mean Mm -hmm. I paid for my MBA and um and I quit and I took a sales job for half the money and um a lot of my father thought I would starve he said you're gonna starve you you can't sell anything um (laughs) thanks dad (laughs) I know um because you know you have to be a little tough but you you almost develop a thick skin doing it Mm because you there's a lot of rejection and I think I learned you can't take anything personally and that's helped me but um I think within six months I was waitressing part time to pay the bills because mm-hmm. I didn't make any money. But then I got hired back by my old company to sell, and that lasted a year. And then I got laid off and was able to collect unemployment, and I kind of thought about it. And in 2002, there was sort of a downturn in the economy, not as bad as 2008, mm-hmm. but it was hard to go back to work. And after I took the summer off and rode my bike across New York, and I quit smoking in that year. So it was great. I had no money, but I was so happy. But I said, I have to go back to work. So I took another sales job, and this time I made it. So I was there three and a half years. And yes, I had the highest sale in the office within nine months because I knew, I I thought, I I have to be successful here. I'll never find another job. And Mm -hmm. I was nervous. It was, I was like 40, 41. And you had all those different experiences to draw on, right? You weren't 23. Right. Right. But people have an expectation that you're going to follow a career path, Mm -hmm. especially if that's what they did. Because I can remember having a phone interview with a fella, and he said, you've been out of work for seven months. And now I think people have been out of work for years. Well, back then, that was really unusual. It right. Was. Yeah. Right. So. so you, I think, Krista, are an excellent example for anyone <laughs> that you're encouraging through your continuing education. To you go didn't back. take a linear path. No, not at no. all. And it was, And it was hard, but I also think I wouldn't be in the job I'm in today and be able to do this at this age if I didn't take a lot of those risks. Nice. It was very risky to leave and you know I wasn't married I didn't have anyone supporting me mm-hmm. I had um, I didn't maybe have a lot of bills I didn't have kids but um, I think it was worth it. Wonderful. Yeah yeah. And you right now are enjoying doing a lot of outside activities <laughs> right? You <laughs> That's run. That's what I do. Yeah yeah yeah. I you do. run. I do. And let's see, you were telling me about this warrior dash. What is a warrior the, dash? Um, I know I have, I tend to have a lot of active friends. That's what I do in my free mm-hmm. time. Um, probably comes from the dance background. Um, it's a 5K obstacle. It's really popular right now because, and so is the Tough Mudder. That's mm-hmm. the same theme where you do obstacles. Uh, you get a lot of Marines that do it. Okay. So you have to climb walls and you climb under barbed wire and you climb through mud and you do a um, balance beam through water. So it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. But all of those are just goals. Like I ran the marathon last year. Um, and it, I just said once I quit smoking, I figured at some point I would train for a marathon. So, And you don't think you'll ever find time in a week to run 30 or 40 miles. 
And I always use that example when people tell me they don't have time to go back to school. Because mm-hmm. I say, you do. You, you'll find the time. You'll find the time to study. And, um, and you do. You, you find the time. Were you out running like in the middle of the night? If you <laughs> I was. There were times if I didn't get up in the morning, and then if I missed it at lunch, then I would teach at like, night. Uh-oh. And there were times at 9.30 I'd have to go out and run five miles. Right. Because Mostly because you don't want to get hurt when you mm-hmm. actually do the marathon. So you right. want to stick to your plan. So, yeah. so reflectors are our friends at that point, right? You were pr- hopefully yes, wearing... I ran yes. with a flash, two flashlights. All right. Okay, that's a visual. <laughs> I, I like that. I did fall once, though. I twisted my ankle at night, so then I stopped doing that. Okay. <laughs> now, what do you think you might want to pursue as you're moving forward? I know you're fairly new in this role at Central, so you're still getting your... Yeah. You know, um, and it's kind of a dream job because I feel like it, it uses all the skills that I love because I get wonderful. to work with a lot of people and get to meet new people and it's and I get to help a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually, I think if not this fall because I'm too busy, the following fall I may go back for my master's in social work hmm. or counseling. There's one at Central and there's one at UConn. So I've talked to a few professors because I think it's good just to keep going back, you know. A perfect example of what you're encouraging other people to do. And actually, some one of the previous guests on Midlife Matters went back, and she finished her, she, first she had to finish her bachelor's, had no plans to getting a master's, but right. then someone said, well, think of it as like a pregnancy. It's like nine months. She took this accelerated, yes. condensed program yes, yes. at Fordham. So she got her master's, yep. and she was around... 50 and maybe extra yeah and her daughter was graduating mm-hmm. from law school at the same time that she finished see see yeah. and now she's working for a town and started part-time and now full-time and she, she had several jobs in between doing social work right. so i mean she's in her early 60s and she's going gangbusters and i think people love people like that mm-hmm. it's like um my colleague the um the management faculty member said that you bring so much more to the table and if you can just build on that and and um, and be energetic I think really helps too and I think it shows really good energy if you go back to school and study and then you're around young people too which can be ener- energizing mm-hmm. right you know or a variety of people well and when you talk about how important culture is I mean youth is yeah. one culture so mm-hmm. if you never are in their world right you never know what right. they want. Yeah, there's I, uh, a blind spot there, right? We did a program. Um, we did a free program for nonprofits through Continuing Ed, and we did a class in social media for nonprofits. And mm-hmm. we had probably 60 people show up to hear um, one of the professors speak for three hours, and you could hear a pin drop. They were riveted. And they were all in middle age. That's when they do a lot of you know free nonprofit work, mm-hmm. right? When they want to do what their life's calling. And they were so intimidated by social media. Oh, okay. And it was um, interesting. We're going to do a class in it now. I actually may take it because I feel the same way. I feel like I don't do a lot of social media with what I do in continuing ed. So. Mm-hmm. But I remember talking to one of the students, and she said, can students attend this? And I said, well, you guys already know what you're doing. And she said, not really. We don't know how to use it for business. Okay. And so I thought, I misread them. Mm-hmm. Right? I just assumed they knew how to use social media, and I thought that's a good point. That's a great point because they don't have that business, that bank of that experience sense. in right. business. Where, as I was saying earlier, the idea that we can see the patterns and draw on those experiences and make decisions and problem solve and generate alternatives because right. we, we're, we're savvy in some ways. And I would think the person you were speaking to, the younger person, hasn't no. had the opportunity to build that level no. of savviness. She, uh, no, and she doesn't have those soft skills. Yeah. So I guess if you can combine the two, mm-hmm. you know, if you can learn social media and the keystrokes, um, and then you can teach it and understand their world, it puts you a step ahead, I think, mm-hmm. definitely. At this point, I would like to mm-hmm. invite you to think about advice, talking about older, younger, you maybe would give to your 25-year-old self. (laughs) What were you doing when you were 25? Um, You know, it's interesting when I think about it, because if there's one thing I feel so thankful for for now is, um, you know, when I think about this, I think, oh, maybe I haven't really had a challenging life, but I always feel so thankful for my health. Mm -hmm. I was very sick as a kid. I had rheumatic fever, so I couldn't do any activities until I was like 13 or 14. I couldn't put any strain on my heart, so mm-hmm. um, you don't really remember it, but um, 
But I, I think if I could give a 25-year-old or my 25-year-old self advice, I would say to be healthier. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think I, I think you really don't realize how much you'll want your health when you double that, you know, mm -hmm. 25 years later. So, because I smoked a lot. Okay. And I was very thin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dancing. I mean, I just, it, it, I felt great, but. Mm -hmm. Your body's so. going not so much. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. And it's really hard to stop. Yes. Yeah. That's what I understand. Yeah. One of the hardest things ever. Mm. Now, what would you say to yourself, maybe zooming in on 40 and, you know, being more established? Because at that point you were really branching out in your career. Yeah, I'd really changed careers mm -hmm. and didn't know what I wanted to do. I said I wanted to get sales experience because being in marketing, I was always working with salespeople and um, they always reminded me that I didn't know what it was like. But until you go out there and earn your living on commission and mm -hmm. you have to ask for the order, you, you really don't know. So, um, But in thinking about that, I think I probably wouldn't overestimate what it takes to make you happy. And maybe it's me, but maybe that's why I'm so active now and I just do the things that make me happy. And they're not working so hard that you can buy a BMW. I mean, it's the small, it's really this being with friends, right? Mm -hmm. And doing the little things. So I think, oh, when I look back on my life, I say, oh yeah, those are the things that make me happy. But at the time, you're always thinking it's something else. And I think there's certainly a lot of emphasis on setting goals, achieving them, yes. you know, counting the numbers of right. what we're earning. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a sense of self-worth yeah. that can certainly be important. Mm -hmm. So that's a wonderful lesson for you to share with our audience and for you to have reflected on because yeah. it, I think, can be pretty seductive to, to, to measure yes. your success by those external... By those things, mm -hmm. like... I always use the example, someone had said to me I have on a couch, like one of my cats, he said, oh, was, was that the damage the cat did? And I said, yeah, but, you know, recently I got two new cats, and my girlfriend said, how could you get two cats? You're so busy. I said, because they made me happy. Like, a new couch wouldn't make me that happy, but having, mm -hmm. you know, taking care of, I'm an animal lover, that's what makes me happy. So it's, it's kind, kind of, of I think, putting, putting that, that in perspective. perspective, is what I think has evolved over all those years. Wonderful. And it doesn't usually take as much money as you think. Mm. Do you think? Oh, I don't think so. I mean, I would agree. I've had a similar set of learnings around yeah, you know, yeah, the things that matter. And people who write about middle age talk about it being a time when you learn to say no, you learn to let go. You just purge. That's yes. what my girlfriends and I call it. We purge the things that don't make us happy. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And really focus and say, you know, time gets to be more finite, more precious. Right. You'll find particularly as you age further. and um, Right. Yeah, time goes by really fast. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But I feel like at this point, it's if you want something done, you ask a busy person. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's true. It's the busier you are, the more you get done. And yeah. that's the advice that you give to these people contemplating continuing ed, right? right? You're saying you'll find the time. Right. If it becomes a focus area and it's something that you believe will contribute to. Right. Yeah. And it will. It will happen. in some way. Even if you don't realize it immediately, mm -hmm. I, I think that that it will. Getting those skills. And people feel that way when they get done, especially as we're offering more programs and seeing it. So, Well, Krista, this has been terrific. <laughs> Thank you. I Thank hope, you for I having hope, me. Absolutely. I hope we generate a lot of interest uh, with folks yeah. who are watching. And I just applaud everything you're doing, and I think it's a great service. It's just Thank wonderful. You. And yeah. I'm glad middle-aged women get to benefit from yes like i know yourself and, and i'm always and open to ideas too okay Great. so thank you very much for joining us to look forward to having you learn from other fascinating women in few events of midlife matters i'm your host georgianne lucier thanks so much